Stripe Show podcast live here today, PGA show. I'm your host, as always, Travis Fulton. Who's sitting next to me right now? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Good to be with you, Travis. Mr. John Tattersall, one of the top teachers in the game. We're going to be doing a little instruction talk here um, on some technique, technique that we see with the best players, right, and the variety of things that we see, but also technique that we see with amateur golfers, patterns that we see um, that our job is to help fix and make that pattern more. I like to say, and tell me what you think of this, okay? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my line. My job as a teacher, okay, amateur golf, they come in, I look at their swing, and I see this, 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 and this. This is good, we need help here. My job is to not only give them good information, but I got to put it in the right order. 100%. I, uh, I always tell people if you're coming into the emergency room and you've got a cut on your finger and you're grabbing at your chest, I'm a little more concerned about your chest right now than I am your finger. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, we're not literally saving people, but you want to prioritize uh, and you want to figure out what can I do that's going to change things the most and kind of go from there. Right. So the, so the pattern and the prescription and putting things in the right order is, is paramount. And as you do that, what I tell people is, look, as we do that, we're going to see some different in ball flight, but I'm going to change the probability of impact. We're starting to change the probability of impact more in your favor as we do A, B, and C. Yes, so simulators have helped so much with that yes. uh, because we're actually looking at what's causing the ball to do what it's doing. Right. And I found that years ago we thought, okay, the path is so important, you've got to fix an over-the-top move. Really, if we get, we get looking at this stuff, very few people are way, way off on path. They're way, way off on where the club face is pointing. And uh, and the thing other people will say to you is, at, at more the high handicap level, like, I can do it really well once or twice. And I was like, no, you really have never hit a golf ball correctly. Things have maybe come in the right order and happened to get there. You've never hit a really, really good shot. And now we know with launch monitors what actually we're looking for. So we know what we're quantifying now. And as teachers, we could see it, but it was very hard to convey it to people. And now we can actually show them this number needs to be somewhere in this range to get the desired result. Right. One of the topics that, that we talk about a lot in social media, on the range, amateurs, tour players, wrist angles. 100%. Okay, yeah. so yeah. What, are, what are wrist angles at the top of the swing? And I'm going to start with, here's my lead wrist. I'm a right-handed player. Mm -hmm. If I went into extension, yep. okay, there's extension. And then if I went into flexion, right? Yeah. Okay, so of those two, right, the, the one that's like, well, you don't want any part of that. You don't want any part of Correct. extension. Yeah. Right? Unless yeah. you're a tour player. Unless you're a tour player, right? Yeah. So I look at Will Zalatoris. Yeah. One of the most one of the most interesting golf swings I think out there when you're talking wrist angles. Mm -hmm. He takes it back in flexion and he actually takes on extension coming down. Mm -hmm. Will Zalator shows up to your lesson team. He's taking on extension on the downswing. You're not changing. You're not. Probably changing. not. You're probably not touching that. No, unless he said he's got a shot he doesn't like or yeah. something like that. But probably not. But a 20 handicap, 15 handicap shows up. They're pulling down extension coming down. You're going after that. Uh, if they're slicing it. So if they have the ability or if the club is far enough, low enough, if you will, coming down, there's a squaring effect that takes place with what the club's trying to do to try and catch up to the force. So essentially you've got mass on the end of the golf club or close to the end, and that mass is trying to get in line with the force of the club. So if, if they have the mass in the right place and it doesn't have to be too low, it is going to square, basically, because the mass is trying to catch up to the force. So most recreational players don't have a good enough sequence in their swing that even if they had the correct wrist angles, they can go out of alignment through impact no matter what you do. So if I've got extension coming down on that lead wrist, in that shaft, say, there, pitch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, if I've got extension in that wrist and that shaft pitched out there, correct. Uh, that's two different things. That's two different things. If the mass is this side of the handle, when it, when it starts to line up, it now falls this way, which is, again, an opening. So a tour player, when they have the shaft in that position and the handle is out here, the force is this side of the mass, that club is trying to catch up that way. So the natural squaring effect is happening. Right. 
And no matter how much you tried to put that wrist into flexion, if the club's coming this way, that would just dump it further underneath. So it wouldn't actually square. You may hit a massive block for different reasons. Right. So steep and from the inside. Like left like wrist, I could be steep. Yeah. But it, but it's theoretically traveling mass behind it. Correct. Right. Yeah. And yeah. usually, what you see with that player is you'll see them come down and they'll kick out with a little higher handle. Possibly, yes. Right. A Mickelson, for instance. A Mickelson. Yeah. Uh, Mark Leishman. Yes. Michael Thompson. Like, there's a few players I, that I, I would yeah. see. Yeah, any of those guys that take their careers. Yeah. Right. Now. yeah. right. But there's, so there's other things happening. So, And then I would say they're not necessarily trying to rotate the club fast. It just it is catching up very quickly. A higher handle tends to have a faster closure rate. Mm -hmm. Tends to. Uh, and, so you'd see those kind of things. And you so I look at shaft plane a lot at impact to see what that's doing. If the shaft plane is too high, I'm not going to see much flexion typically. And, and you typically you don't see that player opening up, like no. flying over. No, because again, that club is steep. There's got to be some delaying of the pivot yeah. to allow that to happen. Right. So now I'm up here, and I take that lead wrist, and I've got extension. Now I move it into flexion, let's say. Yeah. So now you got a DJ type of yeah. All right. So if I if I take that lead wrist like that, what can I do more so here versus here? Uh, you're going to have a more of a push fade-ish type motion through impact. Yeah. I would say that that type motion takes an incredible amount of strength to get the club back to the golf ball. If, if people are trying to lay down the shaft too much, the club doesn't suddenly spring back in line. It continues to fall under. So for a lot of recreational players, they're getting into a very flexed wrist position in transition and hitting massive blocks, or they get tired of that and hit massive hooks. Yeah. How much? How much is this conversation in your discussion with an amateur player? Like extension, flexion, all those things. I, I may not use those terms, but I'm certainly trying to affect those results. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times, I'm looking very much first at sequence because if somebody's coming down and they're open early with the chest, for instance. The wrists are again. That, that's the finger cut, not the not the heart attack. Uh, so I'm, I'm like, how do I get the? If I get the chest and arm ratio to work a little better, a lot of times that club is getting in line better. Right. It has a chance. It's natural. You know, this, this, again, mass is chasing force. Is there too much right now on flexion in the lead wrist? overall dialogue out there in our industry right now is there too much dialogue I, I think so i think there's too much of that thinking that is a cure-all for us like the yeah. the face is open at impact therefore the wrist must be in flex in extension right. would not be correct because I, I could show you a ton of players uh, again if you talk about where the game is going long drive guys very very few have flexion in the downswing right because you simply can't get enough lag or whatever you want to call it right you can't pull on the shaft enough if it's in flexion and, a, and right. a lot of ladies, actually, you'll see them in a lot of flexion on top of the swing, and they just don't have the upper body strength to make it work. Yeah. So it's, if, if, you're, if you're looking at ball fight and you're trying to fix that, flexion is part of the equation, but I would say there are so many torques and forces going on in that area that are creating that. I don't just try and lay it in a position and make it happen. All right, let's get up a minute, because I want to talk about the club face here mm -hmm. next. So... So... Watch this club face here. So I have so club face going back, club face preparation. Yeah. Okay. So I take it halfway back, right? The toe right there, slightly down. Yeah. Call that square ish. Ish. Yeah, I'd be yeah. fine with that. I mean, there's some forearm rotation taking place for that to happen. Right. But to rip the toe up, that's not just a body rotation and a tilt, is it? That's a forearm rotation. A little forearm rotation yeah. there, which great players do. Right. And I find, John, that with amateurs, I'm trying so many times to get this club face prepared, whether it's here, mm -hmm. here, and then maybe even sometimes coming down. More times than not in development, getting that face to be square or even more closed. Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's a statement we probably both used. Learn, teach somebody how to hook it and spend the rest of it trying to get out of it. Right. So you definitely want them coming from that side of the fence. Right, so a player comes in, face may rotate open, toes hanging a little, rotate it open. Now I'm coming down, and I've got to take this open face. And you can see how the face is laying down on the right-hand side of the shaft. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can't see it from that camera's perspective. Yeah. But as that face is laying down, it's a big ask to bring it from the inside with shaft lean and swivel the face. Correct. 
a big ask. It's a big ask. What I would tell you is a lot of people, when you're seeing that, I'd look at where the trail on. So I've looked okay. at way too much 3D. Uh, you can't sleep. It's a great way to put you to sleep. But a lot of times when you're seeing the player that's in a bad spot in that situation, the trail arm has bent too much, or it's too much in this position. Okay. It's gone like almost internal versus too much external. So there's not enough structure on the trail side of the arm. So when the, when the pivot starts to pull on the grip, it sends it into funny positions. Mm -hmm. And the right arm is in this position too much. So if you're in that position at the top, that is going to send the club head that way. And if it's narrow, if you have a narrow right arm, which is difficult to do with a microphone in your hand, but if your right arm is too narrow, typically that will send this into extension and the left wrist into extension. So if you have better structure at the top, that essentially will make you have more of the look, look we're looking for. So I see an open face in a lot of players, but when I see an open face in a lot of players, I see much more of this look. The right okay. shoulder didn't retract enough. Right. The right elbow went behind the shirt seam here, and now the club is more in that position. So it's, again, that mass is chasing that force. So if I hear in that position, that's more of an opening in a bad way coming down. You as a good player, you're putting force into that club to make it stay between your hands. Right. So, okay, let's, so let's go the other way. So you see players like who get a lot of long drive guys will let that right elbow drift, right? 100%, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll let it yeah. drift yeah. and then crank on it. Yeah, and when they do it, they're, again, from talking to them and working with them, they're not trying to let that drop. That, the, yeah. This is going faster than that, yeah. and it's stretching this way. So as you take an arm and you stretch it and pull it back towards the center line, that mass is now going the opposite of where the force is going. So the hand pass going out, slightly. In a slightly yeah, well, yeah, if you go to the top, if you just turn this way for a second, your elbow has traveled behind the seam, so without moving the pivot much, that elbow is coming back in front of the seam. And that would look like a shallowing action. Right, right, right. For, for a lot of players, if you actually went to the top, and there's a lot of this going on at the moment, you said, leave the hands up there and rotate the chest, that would not be a shallowing, because then we see on, on launch monitors, these players have got the shaft in a pretty low position for impact. So if the handle gets too far that way, it cannot get low. So there's, there's math that doesn't get solved if you do that. It's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so if, you, if you look at 3D where, because the, the problem with golf and looking on video is it's hidden is the right arm. Yeah. And the problem is that the, the mass is trying to chase this force, so it looks as though that's narrowing. This isn't narrowing in a good fight. Okay. Right. And so in a, in a recreational player, that is narrowing. And that's when people say that's bad to pull down. Right. And I would say, no, good players pull down, but they push at the same time. Yeah, for the right elbow pushing out. It's pushing out. Pushing out. And so yeah. very few tour players that I've seen the data on, this doesn't bend much more than 90 degrees. And it starts going straight pretty early. Would you also say that, look, there's got to be some of this? Oh, definitely. But yeah. again, but again, that's that that was going that way very quickly a moment ago. And now this is transitioning back. So definitely. That's so there's got to be some of that. that happens, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And shallowing. But your intent wouldn't be that particular. Yeah. Shallowing is just simply the shaft moving closer to horizontal. Yes, in so transition. Yeah, so the, the I, I think, and, and we got a little carried away with it, so that the club definitely does lower. Yeah. It doesn't mean that more lowering is a better thing. Right. So if you talk to, you know, who you've talked to, I'm sure, Sasha McKenzie, like, shallowing is about that much. Yeah. It's not, not that much. Right, right. Yeah. So but, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, because most people you see are, are steep coming down. Yeah. I would encourage people to look at what the right arms are. Yeah. How much do you feel like, with, with these power players. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I've had this conversation. I was talking to Chris Como about this. I feel like these long drive guys, right, this long drive competition and how these guys recruit, go after speed, yeah. I feel like it's helped our industry a ton. I really do. Oh, I, feel like, I feel like it's helped us kind of move back to you know, this, this turn the upper, not the lower. Yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? No. I, mean, I mean, when I was young, that's what I was... Where I'm a little older than you, but, but yes, that's yeah. where we were. Right. We were. We were resist and rotate the upper bow. So now you look at these, you look at these long drive guys, I mean, they're, they're, they're there's no resist. I mean, it's, they're, they're no, I, I elongating the up. Absolutely, and, and to the right more. So I spent the day with Chris and Bryson in February, Okay. and I was shocked how far right and up his mass went immediately, yeah. which would have been counterintuitive or counter to what we were telling people a few years ago. Yeah. So he was moving instantly, his pressure got way right, his mass moved right, before the club was waist high. Book the driver. Yes, and, and with the iron. Less with the iron, obviously. Less, yeah, less yeah. intent. Yeah. When he was he was standing there trying to hit drives and things below 200 ball speed, it was not happening. That's a way of saying it's not happening. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you, you think about that, you look towards the audience here, it's, 
it's this little trace, right? Like, yeah, correct. You know, it's kind of this, this little, almost like this Humpty Dumpty effect. Kyle Berkshire. Yeah, which right. I love that. I mean, Absolutely. That, you know, to me, I was on the range of Palm Springs last week. Yeah. And I saw seven, eight guys doing that. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you're looking at what we're looking at, how do we get people better? You cannot argue that the form is better than function. It's just not possible right. because you look at, we have to send the ball further now. And nobody who plays golf for fun gets mad when they're hitting, you know, longer. Right. Nobody quits because they're hitting too far. Right. So we got some people here. So here's, let's talk distance for a second. Mm -hmm. right. Anybody want more distance off the tee with the driver? I didn't yeah. think so. I thought no. you were all hitting too yeah, far. Yeah, exactly. It. Okay, so I've had that happen one time in a lesson in 22 years. I'm hitting everything a little too far. You know, my, yeah, my seven iron go a little too far. I had somebody say that, and then we looked at it. It wasn't true. Yeah, well, I'm like, well, that's why you got those other clubs for you. <laughs> so, hit a shorter club. All right, so distance. I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then yeah. I want you to react. Shoot yeah. a hole through them, please. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay. All right, so my belt buckle, yeah. I'm going to trace just a little. Yeah. I'm going to trace towards my right heel a little bit. Am I going to sweat? Correct. But I'm going to trace a little, and then I'm going to kind of let my right hip kind of elongate up. Yeah. And I'm going to lose a little flexion in my knee. Yeah, it's okay. Like, I'm not going to try to, like, anchor down. Like, like a shot putter. No. You know, I'm going to let it kind of elongate up a little bit. And as I do that, I'll keep the energy moving up through my spine and, and, and even feel like my spine is extending a little bit back. Right. Yeah. Like this, keeping my orientation right. to the ball. Yes. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to stay still and down. No, I tried that. It doesn't work very well. So don't I'd stay down. I'd, I'd say no. No. Um, so what I what I would say is exactly the same thing, but I would say you can push if you've got fairly good functioning ankles. Okay. You can push laterally, get the pressure to the outside of the foot. The brain's phenomenal at figuring out where it is in space. So hopefully you're not going to fall over. As it feels pressure move to the outside, the reaction is that it's going to push this way. So you'll see a lot of the long drive guys too also, and ladies, they push this way to start. So it's an awesome. equal and opposite reaction. Awesome. So they are, they are loading that way, and that creates that reaction. I see that a lot. I saw that in the range of tons last week in Palm Springs. You saw them kind of really kind of loading the left, and, they, yep. and then they push it off. And what you said also, I'd agree with, that the base of the neck is kind of a central. That's that's a pretty central part. That's not moving. So we don't want that. No. That wouldn't help. So we are going from a flexion position here. But this is pivoting over. And then we are going to an extension with the upper spine. Yeah, so that so just And it's extension around. in the thorax. Yes. Um, you're not trying to extend the back. No, no. But it feels, it kind of feels more this way. Absolutely, 100%. Versus, yeah. versus down. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. You, you know, you've taught tons of people when somebody comes to you and they say they've got a back problem, I go, okay, L4, L5, is that what they told you? You go, yeah, how do you know? I said, because you don't have hips that are functioning, so you're not, sweet, you're not moving this way and rotating the hips. They're trying to do too much from the lower spine. So check this out. So I hear way more, you know, through my social media, through the Stripe Show podcast, you know, I've got to shorten my swing up. Yeah. I need, I need to shorten it up. Yeah. And the reality is, you know, all these videos coming in, I'm lengthening more people out than I'm shortening up as we get older. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm showing them how to recruit user body better and lengthening out their swing. So now they have more potential energy. Right to create speed on the way down. Yeah, so I get them to do a couple of things. I get them to swing back faster, which they don't like. But the data, again, supports that. So if you have more momentum, that's going to carry you further. So we need that. And I'd also set back to what I said a minute ago, the right arm cannot be narrowing. It's going to fold, but if it drifts off or it lifts a bit, that's all okay. Those are good things. Yeah. All right, here's, here's a big concept here. Here's another one. All right, so I've elongated. I've kind of lengthened things out. Now let's talk weight check. Mm -hmm. So, I'll go back 20 years, you know, I turned the upper, not the lower, and then, you know, a very popular term was kind of bump, Yeah. where I kind of bump the hip this way, and then my spine takes on a lot of right bend early. Yeah. Would you say the weight shift now, and as we've just gotten more, you know, data, right, in 3D, mm -hmm. that we, we see this, we see more of this type of weight shift. It's like, it's kind of more of this falling left. Yes and no. Okay. So... I would say the upper spine doesn't move that far forward. Okay. If you look at moment arms, so if I get this pressure too far left too soon, yep. and I'm trying to pivot around this left foot, there's nothing helping me pivot at that point. So this is an exaggeration. That's an exaggeration. That's an exaggeration. So, yep. so you, you would see a pressure shift 
but you wouldn't see a mass shift. And that's where I see a lot of people talking about recentering. If you get this mass too close to that foot, you're not going to pivot. All right, so, so, I, so, but it's not this. It's not that, and that's where I'd say it is some of that, but this is staying centered. Yeah. So that's rotating around that. So you basically, in the backswing, we've loaded somehow onto the right leg, and then if you move slightly to the left hip, you don't need to try and twist. You're at an angle. The left hip's gone this way across you. Yeah. So I, I, I had a, a guy who was a quarterback at Georgia, and he, obviously he can throw, not the current one, but he can throw a football very well. And then he got a golf club in his hand. He's just kind of learning golf. He was trying to do this. And, and I'm from England, so I've never thrown a ball in anger in my life. But I said, how do you, how do you throw a football? Because it's much more of that kind of loading. And so I said, we need more of that in the golf swing. And then we need a shift back to the left. There's always a shift before a turn. Always a shift before a turn. Always. But and, that's, and that's looking at tons of data of tour players and everybody. That's not just something I'm coming with. Are we too, I asked you this question earlier, and I loved your answer. Are we, I said, are we too right now in the industry? You know, you get in these trends. Oh, yeah. We're in the fashion industry. Right. Okay, okay, so are we in the industry right now, we're, are we, we're too reliant on flexion? Yes. Okay. Are we too reliant right now, and there's too much discussion on flying open at impact? thousand percent. Yeah. You're dealing with a population that can't rotate, okay. and you're asking them to rotate. So I joke, I have a PT clinic in my facility, so I defer to medical all the time. Yeah. I wish I could open a PT clinic next to some of these te teachers, because I'd make more money on a PT clinic than I would on a PT. So you, you cannot ask somebody to rotate that aggressively, and the data doesn't back it up. Yeah. The longer titters are not doing that. Right. Hey, that you hear it, right? Open up, open oh, up. Oh, absolutely right. But what, what you gotta have some. You gotta have some. Absolutely. Right? But what I think people do is they try to open too early. They realize in the brain the clock is not where it needs to be, and then there's a stalling for impact. Now the answer to that is is you got to open more. Well, the issue was you open too soon when the arms haven't got back down. The how brain's many, trying to solve the problem. Yeah. How many players on tour right now playing for a living? Mm -hmm. Early extend a little bit. A lot, probably. And particularly with the driver, the ball's teed up doesn't really matter unless if you say to me I want to hit fades all day long and I'm a big overextender that might be a bit of an issue but then Jimmy Walker won a major extending there's a lot of I just said your name and now you're here I just said your name and now you're here <laughs> yeah I wonder if you have pink shoes so I've made this statement that I I think I've really extended every shot in my entire life yeah so so how would you define that though so if the tailbone extends, that's a problem, but if the hip, as, as the right leg comes across, the left hip's going deeper. Oh, so, yeah. so it's like, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not just extending this way. I don't, it's, not, it's, not, it's a little bit of that, but you're not seeing a lot of the left hip. No, so I, I would look at, have you gotten into your left hip properly, and is the right hip then moving around? Because if you just went to walk, this hip would go out, that hip would go deeper. So there's too much right now that you've got to fly over. In my opinion. In your opinion. And so, like, one of the things is, if, if you only have rotation as a way to create speed, then all you've got then is radius. So how fast can you move that radius around you? And so that's that's not enough. Okay, so this is good discussion. We've, 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 we've talked about this lengthening and recruiting going back, and, you know, we've got the shaft coming down, and now we're, okay, we've got to get some rotation. Mm -hmm. We know that the attack angle... You know, it's kind of built in with the iron that you got to hit down. We, yeah. know, we know the attack angle is going to push the path a little to the right. And we see tour players, we see tour players rehearsing this stuff right here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We see this yeah. left exit. Yeah, you were probably watching that. It was on the Narn last, last week uh, on the yeah, team. Like yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, he's, no one's, well, Matt Jones. Yeah, okay. You know, I mean, yeah. He, he's like, yeah. yeah. He's, swing, he's got it over so fast I never see it, but yeah. He's very quick, yeah. <laughs> But Norrin, I mean, you see him doing that a lot. Yeah. So again, we learn how to hook it. We spend the rest of our life trying to get out of it. But that will be over exaggerated. So this left exit, right? Mm -hmm. This left exit over here yeah. kind of counters the attack angle. Yeah. And I can hit a straight shot. Yeah, so just grip the club for a second. So if you're trying to get open early, and this mass is back here, okay, that mass now is going to run this direction. So you'll see a club go further right, and you're trying to get it to go left. But if, but if you as a player, if you weren't even thinking about it, if you had this club catching up with you in front of your body, you would then know it's going that way, and you would try and pull hard that direction. So you're pulling, you're always trying to lead the club with force. So when, what has to be in position, mm -hmm. prepared, mm -hmm. in order for that player now to, to, to be aggressively trying to swing left? 
Yeah, so it, it, when you start off, your upper arms are by the side of your rib cage, and hopefully at the top of the swing, if you want to create any speed, they've moved off your rib cage. So I would try and get them back on your rib cage, lower, before you start really thinking about rotation. Because if they're, if they're up here, again, we know we have to get somewhere down here, from here. Again, that doesn't solve it. So that, there has to be some rejoining of some kind before the rotation can really get going. And when you look at it kinematics, you're going to see an early acceleration and then a slowing, then a reacceleration. Number one reason why a player would hit it on the toe. High handle. Huh? High handle. High handle. High handle. The vertical shaft plane is what I would look at. Anybody wear their toe? Slices, typically. But that would be the handles up here. We need to get it to six iron around 60 degrees. So if, if you don't move and that handle goes higher, that radius comes in, doesn't it? Which will be a toast. Number one reason, oh, dare I say. Yeah, no, yeah. Do we need to? In yeah. Again, I'd look at sequence. Okay. So a lot of players, they can't rotate the thorax very well. The right elbow gets deep. They rotate. And now that club is, it's not that it's moving out so much. You just never got a chance to get in front of them to ever get around this way. There is extension issues. I mean, there is coordination. If somebody's got real, real, you know what issues, I'd look at what their ankles are doing. Because a lot of times people cannot load, unload, and move laterally because of the way the ankle is moving. I'll finish with this. I hear, I hear a lot. You know, the only thing that counts. It's such an interesting move, right? The golf swing, and we know the only thing the ball knows is impact. Right? Correct. It's not telepathic. Ball, like the ball has no idea what I'm doing right Correct. now. It has no idea yeah. what I'm doing right now. Yeah. All it knows is boom. Yeah. Right through that interval. Right. Yeah. And the term I hear a lot is, you know, swing your swing. Yes. Yeah, making your swing, right? Yeah. That's great. And Arnie, yeah. he was, you know, yeah. that's, that's a tough one up to go against. So yeah. As a teacher, you know, people, okay, how's that working out for you, right? Yeah, correct. Right. And it's not a good business plan. <laughs> no. So, but my point is, is that you hear, like, you swing your swing. The only thing that matters is impact. Yeah. But the reality is, in the development pattern, right, in the business that yeah. we're in, yeah. there, there's things to be done, like, before it. 100%. There's things to be done in preparation before it to change that interval, and as I, as, I, as I like to say, improve the probability of impact. Correct. Yeah, we're playing casino, basically. Exactly. exactly. How do we raise those odds? That's right. Uh, and, I, I, you know, look, he's Arnold Palmer, legend. You probably met him, I met him. You shake hands with the guy, yeah. or did shake hands with him. Your hand disappeared, yeah. incredibly strong. So you're looking at what he could do, and, he, and his back was like twice what mine is. Yeah. Incredibly strong. Yeah. Um, but I've done a lot of other things where I've been, I think our service, our industry has done a bad job of just trying to fix what's going on, yeah. rather than how do you actually teach somebody to play. And that's a very different yeah. scenario, and none of this is instinctive. Yeah. So I, I love cars, I, I, you know that, because we've done some events together. When you go to take a driving lesson, like a real driving lesson, they start talking about how the tires work and things like that. And he's like, I just want to drive the car. He's like, if you don't understand how the tires work, you will kill yourself. So you have to understand that. In golf, we're like, we just hit some balls and see what you're doing. We don't give people the principles of what's supposed to happen right. and let them build field, fields around it. Yeah. We just start saying, well, what do you feel there? Well, they've no idea. They've never done it properly. Okay. How are you asking someone who's never done it properly what they feel? And you and you dealt with tour players. They'll tell you things they're feeling like that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. And they're tour players. So I, I defer more now to, okay, I get what you're telling me. Just go with me for a minute. Right. Let me tell you some things that are supposed to happen. I know what the club's trying to do. Yeah. I know what we need to do to get a good impact. Yeah. I know we need speed. So if we're just doing positions, we never get to speed. Right. So I'm much more about, okay, what are we trying to change and how do we change it? And then, and then let the player tell you, okay, that feels like that. Okay, great. All right, so in, in conclusion. Oh, and we got a Minnesota Viking fan back here now. Yeah. I'm going to have to wrap this up. <laughs> Is that a football All right. team? Yeah. All right, so in conclusion, club face in general, we're talking mm -hmm. amateur golfers here. Working yeah. with a tour player is an entirely different experience with what you're what doing. They do, yeah, what, what they, they, what they can do, what they can do, skill set, yeah. and based off of what they're tr where they're trying to go. Right. Right. So in, in just in general with amateur golf, like generally speaking, from a development standpoint, you know, we're trying to get that club face more times than not, to be square or even a little on the close side. Yeah. Right? We, we, you know, we don't want the face to be over-rotated open. Right? I'd agree with that. More times than not. Um, there are players who can get it open, bring it down in a nice plane, and achieve what they want to achieve. Yeah. 
very seldom. When you're, when you're trying to develop a player, hit it more from the inside, have some shaft lean, yep. get rid of this path. You know, more times than not, getting that face to be a, more on the shut side, yep. and you just leave them alone, well, pretty soon they get tired of pulling it. Correct. You know, and they're like, what am I going to quit pulling it? Well, when you start... Correct. They'll, they'll Generally, if you get somebody pulling it, and they have any time on their hands, they'll start to hit They'll start, more. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, yeah, just get it to go out that way. More. Right. Yeah, I oh, put okay. stakes in the ground and say, just start it right at that. Yeah, and all of a sudden now the shaft pitch back. So, right. so, so a lot of a lot of stuff we're talking about, I need to know that, but I'm not really, I'm right. not giving a dissertation on the golf swing usually when I'm trying to help them. Um, but when you're saying about wrist angles, if you were just to grip the club, what I try and get people to do is whatever you start with here, I'm trying not to move that very much. So you're, not, you're not getting into like the biomechanics and the geometry of the swing with them. Very areas. much so, but okay. not trying to, okay. not trying. But like if, if they start with a decent wrist angle here, and they keep pretty good structure, yeah. those wrist angles are not moving much. So when you look at 3D of a, of a wrist angle on a player, because yes, there is extension in the right hand person, but it's very very small. The biggest difference is the rotation of the forearm. So the arms are rotating around the bottom. So number two, like you know, we got to have a little of this. Ideally, like, we've got to have a little bit of this. Yeah, you know, there's guys. There, there's guys that go the other way, Ricky. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Were you surprised that Ricky went out for all that one foul? A little bit. I mean, that's the problem when you're uh, when you're a coach. It's that you know a player comes to you like that, and they say, "I hate how this looks," and you're like, "Why do you care?" Well, I just hate. I want it to look different. And okay, well, why? But if they've made their mind up, they want to try and tell you something. If your name is Butch Harmon, you're you can't tell them. Yeah, you're fine, but, but, you're, but you're, you're dancing on a very nice edge there. So it's like, again, that's why I love all this stuff, because it's like, okay, is that change going to actually affect what we want? Why are you doing it? And, and uh, thankfully, our profession, I think, has gotten much more away from the style and much more into function of what's happening. Like how much energy you're producing, are things lining up correctly? So we're, I think we're going a good direction. I think we are. I think we got... There's, there's more to go. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that, we wouldn't do what we do yeah. if there wasn't, would right. we? We'd yeah. be like, we knew it all. We'd be like, oh, man. Right. <laughs> Write a book and be done. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we've got to have a little of that. Absolutely. But what is that, that, though? That isn't particularly you doing that. I'd say that's you doing that that's making that go right. from there so, to there. Right. Yeah. So this, but the idea is it's moving this. 100%. Yeah. 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 Not Again, so I'd say not when, not when somebody sees that, look at this. Look at that now. How narrow that right arm is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're coming down. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna rotate. Yeah. And we need enough rotation. But let's, Absolutely right. Let's, yeah. let's not. Let's not get into the the market of just flying over. No. So one of the things I think happens if you think of the sternum or the base of the neck, people think that rotation is on this axis, and that's where it's a problem because now the right side's out, the arms don't get down. If I tilted you and had your left hip forwards a little bit, the sternum is very open at that point. Right. The shoulders are different from the sternum. So from down the line, when you're doing that, that looks square. When we're doing 3D, we're doing the markers back here. You're about 30 degrees open there with your chest. So somebody thinking, OK, tour players are 30 degrees open at impact. They think that's 30 degrees open. That's not in a functional way. Last question. Is there too much right now on letting uh, Again, I, I kind of look at like most people, if you ask them to take their chin and touch down here, turn to the right, they couldn't do it. So from a health perspective, I'm okay with the eyes doing that, but I, it wouldn't be a cue I would use particularly. I'm talking coming through, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Talking, so if you're my target, I'm letting, I'm letting myself kind of drift out that way and yeah. rotate to kind of open up more. Yeah, so technically at impact, your head is actually turned to the right. Because if your head, your eyes have stayed here, your chest is in that, so you're actually turned right through impact. So if either you hide, your eyes caught up the center line, that would look like you're moving your eyes forward. That's a tricky one. It is a tricky one because you, you, we, you know, we get perception through our, our appropriate perception through our feet. We bounce yeah. through our eyes and our, our ears. Tricky. You tell someone to start moving their eyes around. Now I would tell them don't release the head eventually. Yeah. But don't, but to try yeah. and tell them to take the eyes forward. It's not. It's not. No, it's not that. Because then I'd say, look, this is now a 12-pound takeaway, and your neck is going to get hurt. You know, it's interesting. I, I was standing on the range in Palm Springs last week, and James. The Prea, the mm -hmm. 6'10 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, South African was playing. Yeah. And I was standing there and I was watching him hit drivers. And he that was, was your right side. Yeah, I mean, he was cruising at 208. Well, yeah. Cruising. Yeah. Like, he, it, didn't look like it, it didn't look like he was swinging. Yeah. And I just went up and I looked at him. I got fake numbers on there. I think. 
Yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. Leverage is a great thing. Mm-hmm. So, what dawned on me though was, okay, this guy's six ten. Like this is where we're going. This is sure. where golf's going. I mean, you're you're starting to see like he's the he's the center, he's the power forward right. that maybe didn't play golf. I mean, when you started, you were probably tall for golf. You couldn't get equipment made for you, and now right. the lighter materials can make them longer. Six four, but I'm looking at most guys in the eye out there. Now, you know, correct. Right. So yeah, we changed. It used to be five eleven, but that's right. Now we're six four. So it dawned on me walking away like, wow, that's where we're going. So I was talking to my friend Christopher this morning. It's like, he's, and he said, hey, guy shot twenty nine over or whatever. But like, yeah, but you, he teach him how to wedge it. Come a little slow with his speed. Now he's cruising at 190 in tournament, and and he and he's okay up here, and he can putt a little bit. Amazing. Yeah. So there's somebody going to come along, just like Tiger came along. It the, showed up the, last hit, week. Yeah, hit it further. He could. Tiger was okay with wedges, great with putting, and then he learned how to wedge it better. So that is happening. So as, as impressive as Bryson is, yeah, and he's 25 past DJ. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last week, I saw a guy that was comfortably 25 past Bryson. Yeah. Now he's not. He's not on the PGA Tour. He's he's mini tours. Yeah. But somebody's gonna figure it out. There. Like yeah. I just there he is. There he yeah. is. Right. He doesn't have the wedge game yet. He can't. You know. No. No experience yet. No. Well, look, we're in the same world. I always joke the circus is coming to town. Well, the freaks are coming to the circus now. That's what's happening. And so, when you look at these world records in other sports that have been, that have been broken, it's not that we're particularly better athletes now than we were back then. We are bigger, a lot of us, not us, but for them. But we've put the people in the right sport. So now you've got freaks of a person doing the right thing. So you get somebody like that. A drive is acceptable anywhere between the trees, basically. Get him good with wedges. Acceptable, but it doesn't mean good. He's hitting wedges and par fives. It doesn't need to be great. Just needs to be decent. He's going to miss greens. He's going to miss fairways. Make him okay with that. Good stuff. We can talk forever. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting for us because the yeah. frustrating thing is we tried to get those people better. Yeah. Yeah. And now people are saying, well, that's not golf. It's like, you can't stop it better. No. I, I had dinner with Patrick Han- Patrick Hanson a few years ago, and he's perpetually tried to get better. And he said when he went Q- through Q school the first time, he said he didn't realize until afterwards. He got it up and down from under, and inside 120 yards every time. And the guys that play with him said, do you realize what you just did? And he goes, no. He goes, you got it up and down from 120 yards every time. So that's how I play golf. He said, so I couldn't have survived on tour with that swing. Yeah. So he just kept on getting better. No one's tinkered more than he has. Probably not, in yeah. a good way. Yeah. There's a lot of people who tinkered that you never hear from again. Yeah, he, he, can, he can tinker and then filter it out. Which is, I, I think, a, a, a trait of great athlete. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Because that guy, can, he, that guy, if you thought of it, he's, he's thought he's of it. A, oh yeah, he's, he's thought of yeah. it at least a dozen times Correct. over 25 years. Yeah, there's a number of tour players I've worked with, where I'm not really giving them anything new. I'm just kind of agreeing yeah. with them. Yeah, you should do that like back in, you know, 2015, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just not an agree. All right, we appreciate it. Stripe Show podcast, John. Thanks, Patterson. You the Thanks, next buddy. All right, appreciate, appreciate it. it.